Life Management Science Labs would like to acknowledge that we live and produce this podcast on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people. We'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands of our listeners and our international colleagues. We'd like to pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Hey everyone, and welcome to Raising Parents, the Parenting Science Insights podcast. Produced by LMSL, the Life Management Science Lab. We are champions of life management science, providing structured insights informed by science and inspired by practice on key aspects of conscious living. Each week, we bring you scientific and practical insights on each element with the expert knowledge of professionals in the field. I'm your host, Dina Sargent. Now, let's get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Raising Parents, the Parenting Science Insights Podcast. I'm your host, Dina Sargent, and over the last eight weeks, we've gone through a wide variety of topics that aim to help us improve our parenting abilities. Our guests have volunteered their time to help shed some professional insight on the matters of concern all the different parenting issues that occur in our society today. I would like to personally thank all the guests that have taken time out of the day to join me for this podcast. Even with the connection failures, busy schedules, and time differences, they've all powered through with me. From positive discipline to parental self-care and communication, we've been guided and at times advised on the different ways that can make parenting just that little bit easier. For our recap episode, I'll be going through a summary of the discussion that occurred during the last eight episodes. Starting with our first episode, we looked at the phrase positive discipline. When I first heard it, I'm gonna be honest, it sounded like something that would barely work. The whole reward versus consequence side to it made it seem like so much more work for parents. However, after having Dr. Janice Johnson-Diaz joining me on the show, I learned about just how effective and detrimental to a child this form of parenting is. The only trouble would be learning how to be an effective communicator. And if anyone has watched all the episodes, we all know that would be my challenge. But I was so amazed and inspired with how Janice shares raising her child to fight for social justices just as much as her. The whole positive discipline way of communicating somehow turned into such an investment of a method. Unlike their mother-daughter duo, there are some parents and child relationships who have a little bit more conflict when instilling some kind of system to their lives. For the second episode, Elizabeth Stitt was our guest and being a retired school teacher who became an award-winning parent educator and coach, she was the definite guest we needed to empower both parent and child in reducing conflict. The conflict between parent and child is heard of so often that it now just seems like a rite of passage where the interactions become less and less effective. With her expertise, we got to understand teenage behavior a little bit more. And I remember I wrote my, my inner teen angst on the show as we role-played a normal scenario that would occur with Elizabeth sharing some examples on how to manage the situation with principles discussed. Our third episode was looking into how parents play a huge role in helping their children understand the healthy way of communicating. However, parents also have a role in being an example when it comes to being happy in their own body. Helping a child or a teen become body positive, Rizgina McAlpine recommended sharing positive thoughts of our own body and as a parent, where your child could then follow suit. This to me was such a realistic method of approach because children already copy what you say and can obviously see what you're doing. So it would definitely mean that they can feel your emotions through all of it too. While it's important to be a role model for your child, it is just important to find the time to spend on yourself as well. In our fourth episode, Shelley Kemmerer came onto the show to help us see the importance of parental self-care. Shelley actively advocates to increase the awareness of sustaining the proper parent care to prevent burnout. We talk about parents looking after kids and balancing work, but also making sure they take the time needed to keep themselves mentally aware and healthy is another aspect of our lives that we need to be added to the schedule. We also spoke about the differences between self-care and self-investment, where investing just takes it that little step further into developing your own personal knowledge instead of just doing what's expected of you. Our fifth episode, we looked into the parent-child communication with healthy ways of communicating with the child. The put yourself in their shoes method was the focuses of Stephanie Luten, who put forth in understanding where the other is coming from. We talked about some of the reasons behind the children's traumas 
using my amazing acting skills, we spent some time role-playing the ways in which we speak to a child without overstimulating them. Now, overstimulating a child can amplify their behavior in both a private and public setting. So another way that we've seen in which it occurs is also having the constant attachment to technological devices. Athena Saraya came onto the show as our sixth guest and showed me how important it is to keep the devices to a minimum, as well as having a set time limit with children. Athena highlights the importance of a parent's role as a rule maker and set the standards for children to follow suit. Working with both theoretical and practical information, we're set to understand how we should interact with digital devices and possibly go through a digital detox ourselves. With the stress of everything happening at once, from school runs to managing a home, it is so easy to get burnt out. Now, while we have talked about the importance of self-care for parents to prevent this from happening, sometimes it all happens at once and you're left with the aftermath of now having to get your focus back to yourself. Helen Gatlin joined me to talk about what happens or what is needed to happen when you experience a burnout. The symptoms are faced differently between mothers and fathers with an overwhelming exhaustion that is shown differently. We look at some of the myths that go around as well as the scrutiny that takes place from parental groups. Now as our last guest for the year, Dr. Danielle Dick came onto the show and used her award-winning expertise to share her insights on kids and the expectations that we put upon them. Danielle's background is the study of genetic and environmental influence on the human behavior and we picked her brain on the way the environment has an influence on the child's development. When we have kids, naturally we have expectations set, even if it is just a pipe dream. It somehow sets the tone for how we see our kids, which definitely changes the way a child can react to scenarios. Using her book, The Child Code, as a tone for the episode, I loved how she set the reality of genetic effect behavior which already becomes a plot twist to the ideology of raising a good kid straight off the bat. Now, going down a timeline of the episodes and the messages each guest has sent through to the audience was actually pretty incredible. Thank you so much for joining us in the last eight weeks. Now that we're heading off to the end of the year, our team have put together a list of practices and habits that our guests have suggested. And I'll be spending the next four weeks trying them out from a digital detox to self-investing and combating burnouts. Join me next week on Raising Parents. I'm your host, Dina Sargent, and thank you for joining me. You've been listening to Raising Parents, the Parenting Science Insights podcast, produced by the Parenting Science Labs, a division of LMSL, the Life Management Science Labs. More episodes are available from 10 Life Management Perspectives and can be found by searching LMSL on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcasting apps available on your smartphone. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate, share, and subscribe to our channel so that other people can find it and we can continue to provide quality content. More of our work can be found on our website at pa.lmsl.net, where you can join our movement. I'm Dina Sargent, and thanks for tuning in.